Hi everyone, my name is Ian and I'm a research engineer at SIGOPT and today I'm going to talk to you about how to use SIGOPT and TensorFlow to efficiently build a convolutional neural net for an image recognition task. In this example, we'll walk you through using SIGOPT and TensorFlow to build a convolutional neural net capable of predicting which digit is present in images of house numbers. This dataset was collected using Google Street View and is publicly available. Google's TensorFlow library has made deep learning more accessible than ever before. While it has become much simpler to build deep neural networks, there are still critical decisions to be made about the structure of the network to achieve best performance. In particular, convolutional neural networks usually have many parameters related to the filter size, depth, and perhaps dropout probabilities associated with their many layers. Finding the best structure configuration can be a lengthy effort of trial and error, and so allowing these structural parameters to be tuned by an optimization strategy has several advantages. In this example, we will expose several structural parameters to SIGOP to find the optimal structure for this street view dataset. Another critical aspect to building a successful deep learning model is selecting an appropriate gradient descent algorithm to fit the weights of the network. In practice, several per-parameter adaptive stochastic gradient descent variants are already implemented in TensorFlow and ready to use. Many of these algorithms, including RMSProp, which is outlined on this slide, require setting parameter values to govern the behavior of the algorithm. For RMSProp, the learning rate, momentum, and decay terms can have a large influence on the method's ability to find the optimal weights. In these animations, we contrast several parameterizations of the RMS prop algorithm on a simple 2D surface. Even in this low dimensional space, we can see the algorithm behavior vary quite a bit. Tuning these parameters can offer a real benefit, but involves a lot of trial and error. For this reason, we expose these gradient descent parameters to SIGOPT to be optimized in unison with the structural parameters of the convolutional neural net. SIGOPT has the ability to coordinate hyperparameter optimization using parallel evaluations. Several independent worker machines can be used to evaluate an objective, and SIGOPT's Bayesian optimization service coordinates the search effort. Each worker machine is only required to communicate directly with the SIGOPT service. For this example, we will create four GPU-equipped machines in AWS to accelerate the search for the best convolutional neural net configuration. So the first step in running this experiment is actually creating instances that are capable of evaluating different configurations of the convolutional neural net. And to do that, we'll use the AWS Management Console to create several instances that are GPU enabled. So we'll sign into the console. Click on EC2. Click on Instances. Go to launch instance. And we're actually going to use a uh, community AMI that we've already released that includes several machine learning libraries pre installed. So we're going to go to community AMIs and search for SIGOPT. And this should be available in all US regions of AWS. And you should be able to find the SIGOPT ML sandbox. So we're going to select that AMI. And we're going to choose instances that have GPUs. So we're going to pick the G2 8x large instances. And as we mentioned before, we're going to create four of these to conduct this optimization in parallel. We'll call this TensorFlow Worker. Okay, and now the instances are getting set up. Okay, so now that all the instances are set up and running, we're just going to select all of them and grab their public DNS names down here. Uh, and so I've already done that and actually just copied them into a separate text file. So we're going to need that later to actually make connections and get things running on these on these four machines. So it's just there for reference. So now that all the GPU enabled instances are set up in AWS, 
we're going to connect to each one of them and get the environment ready to run our experiment for this example. And the way that we're going to do that is by simply using uh, split panels in iTerm2, one per instance, where we can broadcast commands to our small collection of these four worker machines. So I've already uh, loaded each SSH connection command into these four panels, and we're going to connect to all four machines simultaneously. All right, so now we're connected to all four of our TensorFlow worker machines. And as I mentioned, these are all using our preloaded uh, AMI that has the TensorFlow libraries installed. So there's only a few steps we really need to take to get things set up to run this experiment. Um, the most important being we actually need the data set that we're going to consider. And we need to load that on all these machines so that we can run through configurations. So it's a simple step to basically download uh, this SVHN data set uh, that's hosted at Stanford. So we're just going to broadcast this wget command to all of these instances. All right, and so now all those matrix files are downloaded and local on each one of these um, GPU instances. And now we're going to find our SIGOP credentials so that we can actually authenticate our connection to the optimization service. And this example will actually work with our free trial, so you don't even have to have an existing account. So we'll go ahead and navigate to the SIGOP website and sign up for a free trial. So once you have your account created, you just navigate to your profile page and copy down your API token. And this token gives you access to the optimization service, as I mentioned before. So we'll keep it uh, in this text file for future reference in this example. So now we're ready to create our SIGOPT experiment. And the experiment definition includes all of the parameters that we are hoping to optimize with respect to the convolutional neural net. So we only need to create this experiment once um, we'll just run this experiment creation code on one of the worker machines. And to do so, we'll need the SIGOPT API key that we just created using our test account. So we'll copy that in as our client token. And then we'll just run this snippet, which is available uh, under our examples on our SIGOPT GitHub repo on one of the AWS machines. Okay, and now if we go back to our profile page uh, on the SIGOPT website and we go to our experiments, we should see that an experiment uh, related to the Street View house number data set has been created. So there's no observations yet on this experiment, but it's properly registered um, in the SIGOPT service. For the TensorFlow worker machines in AWS to communicate with this experiment, we need the experiment ID that was created by the SIGOP service. So to get that, we can go back to our terminal and simply just look at the ID that was created for this experiment. So we'll copy that as we'll need it um, for the rest of this example. We're almost ready to start running our experiments on all the workers in AWS, but the first thing we need to do is make sure that the process will continue even if we lose connectivity with these machines. And the way that we're going to do that is just by creating a TMUX session on each of our four workers. So that's simple enough. We just create a new session. Call TensorFlow. Um, and now we're going to launch an IPython session in each one of these machines as well. 
Okay, and now we're ready to start optimizing our convolutional neural net by evaluating different suggestions that we receive from the SIGOPS service. And to do that, we're just going to copy in uh, a snippet of code that was written for this example into each one of these uh, terminals, and then the instances will be independently evaluating different configurations of the, of the neural net. So we'll paste that in. And again, this code is available on our GitHub uh, repo of examples with SIGOPT. Okay, and now we see that each instance is starting to train a neural net. So this is evaluating a configuration that was suggested by SIGOPT. Um, so we'll let that proceed. And we can navigate back to the experiment dashboard to monitor our progress on this optimization. So right now we still haven't reported any evaluation results, but we can observe in the suggestions page that four configurations have been created uh, and are being currently evaluated um, by our small collection of worker machines in AWS. So we'll wait here uh, as the results collect for our experiment. Okay, so the optimization is completed. That took about an hour and a half to run fully. We were able to evaluate 120 different configurations for this convolutional neural net. And the best configuration that we found was able to achieve 95% accuracy on our validation set for this problem. And here below, we also provide the parameter values associated with that best configuration. So there you have it. We've walked through how to use SIGOPT and TensorFlow together to efficiently build a convolutional neural network. If you're interested in more optimization examples using SIGOPT, we have several worked through use cases on our GitHub repo shown here. And all of those examples only require our free trial account. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.